Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Sorry, it's been a little bit, it's been kind of crazy on my end. So here I have Zara with the surcingle on. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. Um, I just kind of pushed her, um, sent her out and push her forward. Um, kind of the same thing I do each time I go to work with her. I just want to send her out, send her forward. I also am working with the flag a little bit here. Um, and that was good for her. You saw that she yielded that shoulder. This is her more sensitive side. Um, and then she really is responding better to the flag. She respects it, and, but isn't scared of it. And that's what I want. So then I'll ask her to um, ho or woe here. Um, and then we are going to go ahead and change things up a little bit. She did really well here, and I'm happy with that. So here I step back and let out the lunge line again, and then start bringing her in using this hand motion um, and trying to guide her very little um, with the pressure there. Teaching her that those hand signals mean to come in, come to center to me, so that when we do free lunging, eventually, she'll understand what that hand signal and the command to come in means. So here I move to take the surcingle off of her, and she's still pretty leery of me being on her side. Um... She is a little nervous there. You can see how tense her body is. And I think I was struggling with getting the billet out of the keeper. So there, I just try to drop it gently. Even though we worked on stuff around her legs, I didn't want to scare her. She was kind of tense already. I like there when it hit her leg. But I'm happy the way she reacted. She didn't bolt. She just disengaged her hind end. And same here. So when this happens, I just try to keep really relaxed and my energy low. And then just act like nothing... Um, is happening now she's a little bit apprehensive of me approaching her again but I do not want to end on that note with her deciding that she's gonna run away cuz it's scary so I resituated the saddle pad and then I'm just going to put the surcingle <clears throat> over her back a few times until she relaxes and then I'll take the pressure away You can see that she's starting to relax a little bit. She's not jumping nearly as much now. So I'll let her in there on a good night. Good note because she stood pretty well there. Here I was um, letting her check out the stuffy. It's a big stuffed animal unicorn. And I like to use these guys um, to be the first passenger on the horses that are really flighty. And so on this day, um, it was super chilly. As you can see how I'm dressed there. And so I'm just kind of rubbing her all over. There I accidentally shocked her a little bit with the static electricity. <clears throat> so I just took her off to the side of the round pen. I'm sorry, it's a little off, out of frame there. 
and I am just grabbing the stuffy that was introduced to her the day before. And kind of letting her smell it and get used to it. And then I'll just start gradually touching her with it. And as she stands still, I will take it away and relieve that pressure. I did actually end up leaving the stuffed animal in her paddock overnight with her, which she wasn't too happy about. <laughs> There I just placed it on her back and she did show a little bit of apprehension and nervousness, but I liked um, that response. It wasn't crazy. She disengaged her hind end. She didn't jump forward. So I just keep trying this a few times until she's nice and relaxed. And then I take it away from her. So here I'm getting ready to tack her up and what I did is I went ahead and grabbed the training stick and I'm just tossing it in the round pin so that I have it there and I'm prepared <clears throat> for when I have her tacked and I'll show you why in just a minute. Again with the saddle pad I don't try not to be like too delicate around her I want to shake it and flap it around like I would with the saddle when I'm actually going to tack her. So bringing the tack back in, letting her see it and smell it. And I try not to do anything too dainty or sensitive around her. I just want to kind of act nonchalantly about it and have a really positive energy um, while putting these things on her. So just rubbing her back and then placing the saddle pad more over her withers than her back at first and then sliding it back because she was comfortable with me touching her withers at first. She's a little apprehensive of the saddle. I'm not going to stop um, bringing the saddle to her because she moved away from it. So when she stands still like that, then I will slow bouts of pressure and then release the pressure when she stands. Here I do a lot of practicing of swinging the saddle around her and placing it onto her um, and letting the stirrups kind of touch her and the girth touch her or the cinch. And then here I just kind of place it over gently so this, the cinch doesn't fly over the other side and whack her and cause her to potentially jump on top of me. Um, just from spooking. So then I'll walk around and then take it down on the other side. Here I was taking the stirrup that I had hooked onto the horn off and then um, pulling the cinch through and letting that hang down. And there I'm just rubbing the cinch on her shoulder and neck and letting her get used to that feeling of it touching her. So I pick up my carrot stick here, which has the rope on the end of it, and I create a little loop because she is so flighty and I'm not quite trusting of her yet. I make that little loop and then slide it just over the end of the cinch. I just stepped her forward to stand her square. So I'll slide that over the end of the cinch and just use it as an extension of my arm and then pull the cinch over to my side so that I'm not leaning down and having my head there by her legs yet.
and just kind of drop the carrot stick there or the training stick there behind me and then I'll tighten up the cinch here again um, I start them with walking through the lariat and then tightening it around their girth area um, while lunging them so they get the feeling of the pressure around their barrel um, similar to a girth before I actually put tack on them so there's no explosion. So she stands really well for this tightening of the cinch. I am just situating the rope, um, the training stick rope, onto the saddle itself before incorporating the stuffy as a passenger. Here I just toss my training stick into the center and then I'm going to go ahead and um, grab the lunge line because I want her to work and feel um, the stirrups and the saddle on her back and on her sides um, before incorporating anything into the saddle or tied onto the saddle. So I just want her to feel what that feels like being cinched up and on her. So far she's been pretty well behaved. So I just, I'm going to go ahead and snap the lunge line on, which I have here, and then I'll grab the carrot stick to send her out. Then yielding her shoulder, she responds really well there. And then I kind of just cut that all of that training exercise out just because it's kind of the same thing I do all the time is send them out away from me and let them work for a bit. And then again, I'm bringing her in to me for our next stage of training that day. So now I'm going to incorporate her first rider, the Unicorn Stuffy. Again, letting her see it, touching her with it like we did before. This time she's got a saddle on, so she's not going to feel it as easily. Here again, I'm just using this string of the carrot stick and or training stick and swinging it around her, letting her um, remember that ropes are okay, it's not so bad, things touching her. Also letting her hear the sound of the rope hitting the saddle, so getting accustomed to noise on top of her as opposed to just feeling the rope on her. I want her to hear the sound of something in the saddle and on her back. So then I take the 
training stick or carrot stick rope that's typically attached to the end of the stick and tie it um, to the horn of the saddle. And then I am going to incorporate her first mount, her mounted stuffy. This allows her to get accustomed to seeing something on her back in both eyes during um, standing and trotting and movement without having the weight of a rider for the first time. Again, I'm just getting the stuffy tied on really well for her first time around the round pin with the stuffy. So this getting it tied takes a minute, so I'll speed it up really quickly when getting it tied. And then we're ready to get her moving and send her out with stuffy on her. So she stops when she is nervous or is not sure and disengages that hind end and turns into me, which I'm very happy of. Very happy with that response. She's a little nervous and I'm okay with that as long as she's not bucking or bolting. Some horses just freeze. So now I just wanted to get her to move forward. So I'm really slapping the ground to encourage her to move on. Good. There she goes. And again, a little fearful. And that's okay. Disengaging that hind end. I praise her for that. Because that is what we've worked hard to achieve. And Jen just asking again. Any movement forward is good movement forward. Again, just slapping the ground. Spanking the ground next to her. Just outside or um, her bubble, getting as close to her as I can without actually touching her with the stick or the string end of the stick and then sending her on. And she did really well. I was very happy with that. Even at the trot, again, she gets a little nervous and she wants to disengage her hind end and look at me to help, which I, again, I'm happy with. Because she's showing a sign of respect, me as her leader. And you can see here, she's getting used to not just the feel of something, but then the sight in both eyes of that stuffy bouncing around on her back. So she's seeing it from both eyes on top of her back. And this without the weight of a rider. Here, I ask her to reverse. She did very well. This is typically her more sensitive side. So I was very happy with that. There she kept wanting to turn in and be done and really wasn't sure. So I asked her to reverse a couple times and finally she got it. So again, I'm happy with that. Just keeping her moving forward and moving out. And she's doing very well. There I ask her to stop and again, asking her to come in. You can see very little tugging until we get closer here. Good. <clears throat> Not just a step and then I relieve pressure and praise her for that. So that's good. I want to end on a good note. So she did very well. And so I'm going to untie the stuffy from this side.
There I just kind of threw stuff me on the ground very nonchalantly like it was no big deal. Normal everyday activity. Here she's still a little apprehensive of me being on her side and at her um, most vulnerable spot. But again, I was happy with how she was handling it. So here again, taking the string and like throwing it over her and over the saddle and over her belly and letting her feel things hit her, really wanting to desensitize her really well and throwing it over the saddle, letting her hear it hit the leather and move around on the leather. And she did really well just standing there. So I had to relieve the pressure and go to the other side and do the same thing. So the next day we worked with Stuffy and it didn't go so smoothly. As you can tell, she destroyed it. Um, an impromptu session that was not caught on my phone because my phone was dead. However, we did end on a good note, despite what it looks like.